Welcome back. Uh, we will uh, discuss different ensembles and uh, before we do that, let us just go over the ergodic hypothesis once again. It has been told and uh, let us uh, also include some mathematical treaties in as brief as possible. So, uh, the hypothesis states that the time average values of the thermodynamic variables uh, over long time scales is same as the ensemble averaged values. So, we do not need to uh, talk about a dynamical situation or a situation that is evolving over time because if a system is evolving over time then it is difficult to uh, talk about or rather describe the, um, the equilibrium quantity such as pressure, volume and temperature. However, that is taken care of by this uh, time average values being the ensemble average values. So, we have uh, all those snapshots of uh, the system uh, which is evolving in the phase space and we take these as ensembles and then uh, average over all these ensembles and then calculate all these equilibrium quantities. So, uh, as said that it allows us the hypothesis allows us to obtain the equilibrium values of the thermodynamic quantities by doing an ensemble average. So, this is a very nice um, simplification that we achieve and that is why it is uh, one of the cornerstones of uh, statistical physics. Let us go over uh, to the mathematical uh, treatise a little bit. Let us consider an observable which is a function of the generalized coordinates and the generalized momenta which each one of them taking uh, 3 n values in the sense that uh, in 3 dimensions and for n particles. So, uh, let us say the initial position of the system whatever is your system is it may be a classical ideal gas or it could be a, a collection of oscillators or it could be anything else that we uh, collection of spins may be. And uh, so, at t equal to 0 the coordinates are given by in the phase space the coordinates are given by q 0 and p 0 which are some initial values. And uh, then we will uh, define the time average of this observable O is um, that 1 over t 0 to uh, t. So, this is actually should be capital T. Okay. Uh, so, please make this correction and uh, so, it is a d t and then it is uh, this observable being uh, you know integrated over all times and the condition is that this observable uh, at t going to infinity the capital T going to infinity capital T is the time scale uh, of the measurement uh, it exists and it is not a severe uh, condition or uh, it is not a severe restriction. Uh, we will see that uh, in a bounded domain uh, this uh, always exists the observable at t uh, going to infinity that is at very large time scale still exists. So, as time passes by the trajectory of the particle uh, really meanders in the phase space. So, it goes from one place to another and we are just talking about a QP space and uh, the motion takes place in a bounded domain. So, it is sort of you know is going to come back and visit various uh, parts of the phase space. So, that is called a bounded domain. So, as T uh, going to infinity the average values of the observables settle down to their equilibrium values and these equilibrium values are of course, independent of time. So, uh, one can uh, characterize the phase space trajectory by uh, defining a certain quantity called as a frequency with which different neighborhoods of the phase space are visited. So, what I mean is that there is certain frequency with which the system visits certain parts of the uh, phase space that is called as a neighborhood of the phase space. And uh, this frequency is important because this frequency gives us a weighting factor. It gives us a weight if um, a certain system visits a part of the phase space more than other parts then that neighborhood of the phase space is more important in giving us those equilibrium quantities. So, let us uh, define this frequency as some f uh, and uh, is a function of course, the coordinates uh, the phase space coordinates at each point in the phase space. The probability of the system to be in the neighborhood of this at a time t is given by uh, you multiply this frequency by the volume of the phase space. So, this is the volume and this is the frequency of the 
phase space. Okay. And we know that uh, this um, probability, this being a probability if you uh, uh, integrate over uh, all uh, phase space, uh, then this should give, give us 1. And now, uh, we can calculate the ensemble average of this observable, which we started with is given by this, um, this volume part, then the frequency part, which I said that it's, uh, it weights, it gives certain weights to uh, certain parts of the phase space and uh, multiplied by the observable. So, that gives the uh, average value or the ensemble average value of the observable. Once again, uh, just for the sake of repeating, the motion is restricted in a bounded domain. This is uh, understood. And if we wait long enough, then uh, the time average value of the ensemble, I mean time average value of uh, a system rather uh, is equal to the ensemble average. So, we should actually replace it by a system. And uh, the mathematically the same thing is written as uh, the limit uh, t going to infinity, we have this uh, time average is equal to the ensemble average which is defined in the last uh, slide. So, the time averages are indeed replaced by ensemble average and this is what we call as ergodic hypothesis. So, as you see that it is a very important uh, statement or rather a hypothesis which allows a tremendous simplification of the ideas and concepts, especially uh, when you talk about uh, say a, a, a gas, uh, a classical ideal gas, where because uh, of the kinetic energy of each of the molecules, the molecules are always moving around, we are still able to find an equilibrium pressure, temperature or volume and that is because uh, we um, split this system um, into various ensembles uh, in the phase space. So, each point of the trajectory of the gas is taken as a one ensemble and when you take the average over all these ensembles, you get the equilibrium values. All right. So, uh, let us come to a uh, different ensembles in statistical physics and these ensembles are uh, known as uh, the micro canonical ensemble. Uh, the canonical ensemble and the grand canonical ensemble and you might wonder that why it is uh, what is the meaning of this word canonical and uh, really the word canon uh, came from a Greek word called uh, uh, canon or you can write it in Greek letters. Uh, this means actually the measuring stick or the rule um, in general in Christianity uh, it is known as the norm or the rule of faith. So, this uh, as if it has been told as a norm or uh, a rule and uh, that is what the word canon means and um, so we are going to do not in a uh, very sort of strict sense, but uh, that is what you know the meaning of this word or rather this canonical uh, comes from that. So, as if something has been uh, given out either by the church or by the uh, rule of faith. Okay. Let us look at what is micro canonical ensemble and what is it good at because we are going to finally take ensemble average in order to talk about thermodynamic quantities. So, uh, we need to understand these uh, ensembles very well so that their average can be determined or can be defined with clarity. Here I just want to make uh, one comment that you might find different um, uh, notations in different books. However, they all mean the same thing. So, uh, maybe uh, more than the notation uh, you should concentrate upon what it really means because if you go and look at a book and it has different uh, notations, um, there is a possibility that you might uh, get confused. But however, uh, so just know what physical quantities uh, does a particular uh, variable represent. So, with that uh, let me start with this description of micro canonical ensemble and uh, a priori we will just talk uh, very quickly about both all the three ensembles. However, uh, their detailed derivation etcetera will come later. 
there is not much to derive in uh, micro canonical ensemble because uh, it is just a statement and uh, there are some examples that we are going to do. But yes, the canonical and the grand canonical uh, they deserve some more mathematical treaties which we will uh, do. Consider an isolated system with fixed number of particles n. So, let me write down. Uh, volume and instead of uh, temperature, let us talk about energy. We know that energy and temperature are related to each other. And because it is an isolated system, the system cannot exchange energy on number of particles with the surroundings. Okay. So, at thermal equilibrium, the phase space density um, also called as a distribution function which we denote by rho q p is a constant and this we have seen as a statement of uh, the Liouville's theorem, but however, uh, we will quantify this that what it means at a given value of energy. Okay? And uh, a mathematically a very strict value of energy does not mean anything then you uh, cannot calculate the number of uh, uh, a phase point or phase space density. So, usually what happens is that you give it a little bit of width that is say the Hamiltonian of the system which is represented by q p and uh, this Hamiltonian has the same meaning that you have uh, learnt in classical mechanics and uh, it, it also appears in quantum mechanics. So, it has the same meaning the um, average value or the expectation value gives you the energy. And, um, so, um, what is this constant? What is the value of the constant? The value of the constant is some 1 over gamma, uh, it is taken as this capital gamma and it is a function of E v n where E is bounded between uh, E and E plus delta E. So, the range of H is that it is between E and E plus delta E or E plus delta just written delta or you can take a symmetrized uh, width that is it goes from E minus delta by 2 to E plus delta by 2, but they mean the same thing. So, unless the Hamiltonian is bounded between these two values the weight uh, or the phase space density is equal to 0 that is the statement of micro canonical ensemble. What is it good at we are going to see in just a while. So, how do we get this gamma which is a function of E v and n? we simply uh, find the volume of the phase space subject to this condition which we have said that E is uh, between uh, the energy of the system is between E and E plus delta. So, if you think about it that uh, let us just uh, take a sort of area which is given by or rather a radius which is E plus delta and a radius which is E and uh, then uh, we are this volume is basically this uh, let me use a color. Uh, so, this is that volume that we want to find and this volume gives you the number of phase points or the phase space density or the distribution function they mean the same thing. So, how many um, uh, these uh, micro states are there uh, that gives you a measure of this uh, hatch region shown in red. Okay. So, in the figure we have shown that this gamma E uh, we are dropping this other indices uh, V uh, and N this is gamma E is equal to this phi of E plus delta and phi of E and delta is really small uh, delta small means delta is much smaller than the energy of the system. And uh, then this um, gamma E is actually uh, to the first order doing a Taylor expansion is a del phi del E into delta and this we call it as uh, omega of E and this is an important quantity as we shall see. So, uh, omega E is called as the density of states or is a number of microstates within an energy E and E plus d and uh, it uh, the definition as I said it is given by del phi del E and it is nothing but uh, the volume in the phase space the 6 n dimensional phase space subject to the condition which is uh, the E has to match with H of uh, the Hamiltonian which is function of Q and P. 
uh, but uh, given that the E uh, is relaxed to vary between E and E plus delta E. So, uh, this uh, distribution function or the phase space density in terms of this uh, omega is written as 1 by omega E uh, function of E and a delta and it is 0 otherwise a unless your E is bounded between these two values. So, at the end of the day what it means is that if you need to know the phase space density, you need to calculate the number of phase points or the number of microstates that are there between an energy E and E plus d. And what is it good at is what we are going to see um, a priori if you take the log of this omega and multiply it by k Boltzmann constant, it gives you entropy. And once you get entropy which is a nice thermodynamic quantity which has a utility in second law of thermodynamics and then uh, you know combining first and second law and then we can get a temperature which we have seen it is a uh, del S del E is inverse of temperature the thermodynamic temperature and then we can get many other things from there many of the energy functionals that we have discussed earlier we can get it. So, the key is to get this rho or the phase space density or the distribution function. We just quickly go over canonical ensemble and uh, we will not uh, do a derivation here, but it is very important to do a derivation of what the ensemble is. And at this moment as I said I am just introducing the ensembles and we will come back with uh, derivation and applications of each one of them later. So, what is this ensemble? why do we need uh, if we have micro canonical why do we need uh, canonical ensemble. And the reason is simple that now we want to come closer to a more realistic situation. And what is that realistic situation? We cannot say that a system is completely isolated that it is uh, really characterized by n, v and e which are all sharp values or strict values very well defined values. Here we relax one of the constraints that is the system is allowed to exchange energy with the surrounding. So, as if it has been kept in a contact with a heat bath and um, the system is uh, exchanging energy with the heat bath and finally, coming to an equilibrium by exchanging this energy. As an example, if I as you see that I am sitting inside a room and if I have a cup of coffee and uh, this cup of coffee I can keep it on the table and after a while you can understand that it will get cold and probably uh, I cannot drink it uh, after that after a point of time. And because the maybe the temperature of the room is say uh, 300 K or I mean Kelvin uh, which means about 27 uh, degree centigrade. And um, so, if you have a coffee which you need to drink it should definitely be around uh, 60, 70 degrees centigrade. And why it happens is that of course, this cup of coffee is an open system it exchanges uh, energy with the rest of the room and uh, the hence come to a thermal equilibrium. So, it sort of equilibrates with the room temperature, but one very important thing that needs to be remembered and which we are going to come here as well is that um, the uh, cup of coffee becomes cold and uh, comes to uh, thermal equilibrium at the same room temperature. But however, the temperature of the room does not increase because of the hot coffee uh, left there. So, this uh, room acts as a heat bath that it exchanges energy with the system, but the energy or rather the temperature of the system does not increase. And you see this A 1 is the system. So, A 1 is our system. which means a cup of coffee as I said or ideal gas and so on anything that you can think of. Okay. And uh, you see it is kept uh, in contact with a bath and you see there are various points uh, that you can see and each one of them like these points here, here everywhere. Okay. Each one of them is a replica of the system 
and this forms this entire uh, this uh, the total system let us call it as A which is a combination of this uh, our system and the entire the replica of all these systems forming a total ensemble. And uh, our system is characterized by a E1, V1, N1 for the energy volume and number of particles and the entire system A uh, which is uh, or rather the A2 which is the system uh, the heat bath rather consists of uh, energy E2, volume V2 and N2 as the number of particles. And um, as I said that this system is allowed to uh, exchange energy and hence come to thermal equilibrium. Uh, one of the important assumptions here is that our system is very small uh, or rather uh, this system is really an infinitesimal in um, as compared to A2 which contains very large number of copies of the system that we have. Okay. So, A1 has uh, uh, fewer degrees of freedom than A2 and uh, you understand this that E2 is much much greater than E1 and N2 is much much greater than N1. Uh, however, both N1 and N2 are constant that is these walls only exchange energy and not the number of particles. Okay. Uh, but E1 plus E2 uh, is the total energy which is a constant. So, A1 plus A2 that is the system A is really an isolated system which is uh, similar to the one that we have considered for the microcanonical ensemble. So, uh, the whole system the combined system uh, A which is A1 plus A2 is a constant and hence its energy is constant and uh, they are in thermal equilibrium at a temperature T. Uh, so, essentially the walls uh, that uh, the system our system is kept in uh, is allowed to exchange heat or energy, but not the number of particles. Okay. So, that is an assumption. So, but not the number of particles will also be relaxed when we go to grand canonical ensemble in a while. So, uh, we will derive this, but the probability P alpha of finding this system A1, our system, uh, which is in thermal equilibrium with the heat reservoir uh, E2, in a given microstate alpha, this alpha is just an index of the microstate, there are several, several microstates, very large number of microstates, which are the ensembles. Uh, with energy E alpha is given by this Boltzmann factor which is exponential minus beta E alpha sum over alpha E to the power minus beta E alpha where beta is equal to inverse temperature which is K T 1 over K T, K is the Boltzmann constant. Okay. So, uh, the number of microstates accessible to the system is omega 1 which is a function of E 1 and that of the bath is uh, omega 2 and it is understood that omega 1 is much much smaller than omega 2. Okay. So, uh, this is the probability that uh, you are going to find uh, your system that is our system in a given microstate uh, alpha with an energy E alpha. So, we are uh, relaxing that condition as well that it cannot exchange the number of particles. Now, we have kept an opening here and uh, this our system is uh, represented by E 1 N 1 and all other copies of the system which comprise of this A. Uh, so, this is our A 1 and this is our A2 and the total is A and um, we have this E1, N1 for our system and E2, N2, but however, this N1 will you know uh, be not a constant, uh, N1 will go down or it may go up and so on, but however, N1 plus N2 will remain a constant. So, these are the constraint conditions which was there. Earlier, we had made it rigid that this system cannot exchange number of particles. Suppose it has a porous membrane, 
the membrane actually allows the particles to flow out or to come in then uh, capital N or N1 and N2 will not uh, remain constant and um, in fact uh, they can vary uh, but of course uh, we can still define an average number of uh, particles. So average particle number is still possible as we shall see later. Right now we just uh, describing the grand canonical ensemble where the system is in contact with heat and particle uh, number reservoir. Okay. I mean which means that it can exchange both. So it comes to a thermal equilibrium at a temperature T and in addition to the thermal equilibrium it will also come to a, a chemical potential equilibrium which is given by uh, mu equal to mu 1 plus mu 2. Now what are these chemical potential and uh, why is it coming here and did not appear in the canonical ensemble. Before we uh, answer that question, uh, we will say the same thing that is uh, what is the probability that finding the system uh, A1 in a microstate alpha with an energy E alpha uh, number of particles being N alpha is given by. Uh, so, this is alpha sum over alpha. So, same Boltzmann weight excepting that we have an extra term here. Okay, which was not there. So, this mu uh, n alpha and mu is the chemical potential. There has to be a, a bracket here and so on and uh, we will come to that, we will write it uh, neatly and more uh, uh, you know carefully later. But however, just to introduce this uh, probability, this probability is same as the Boltzmann probability that we have seen earlier. Now there are two uh, quantities which are uh, you know these uh, beta and mu and these beta and mu they actually appear as Lagrange's undetermined multipliers. And what are Lagrange's undetermined multipliers? These are um, you know when you are trying to uh, minimize the energy of the system, uh, if you do it without any constraints then there will be no multipliers. But suppose you are trying to uh, do a minimization of this which we do that we are trying to minimize the energy of the particle in order to go to the equilibrium configuration or the one that you actually measure. Uh, then if it is subjected to certain condition. Uh, which is say given by g x y z that we need this multipliers. So, uh, beta is one multiplier which is 1 over k t and uh, mu over k t is another multiplier uh, which is the uh, other Lagrange's undetermined multiplier. So, 1 over k t and mu over k t are the two uh, Lagrange's undetermined multiplier or you can simply say that it is uh, beta and mu are the two uh, Lagrange's undetermined multiplier. They come because we uh, need to minimize the energy of the system and uh, pertaining to conditions which are given here. Okay. E equal to E1 plus E2, N equal to N1 plus N2. Let me give you a simple example. Suppose you have um, the total N is equal to say 8. So, in which case we can have N1 equal to say 1 and N2 equal to 7 or uh, you know uh, it is equal to 2 and uh, this equal to say 6 or equal to 3 equal to 5 equal to 4 4 and so on. Okay. Each one of them will give rise to new microstate of the system but the entire or uh, the total number of particles will always remain a constant. So, we are trying to find the equilibrium distribution which gives us these uh, equilibrium thermodynamic quantities and that is why these uh, Lagrange's undetermined multiplier will come. Okay. All right. So, uh, let us do some example and um, we start with our most familiar example of classical ideal gas.
So, we will do a micro canonical ensemble that is we will uh, calculate the density of the phase points or the number of microstates for this classical ideal gas uh, between an energy E and E plus d. So, the Hamiltonian of the system is uh, P uh, say j square over 2 m and I am just assuming that all the particles have the same mass, but you can take it as m j it does not matter. Okay? So, what we need to find is that uh, number of uh, microstates in the energy interval E and E plus D. Okay. So, this is uh, we have to find. Okay. So, how do we do that? It is simple. So, let us just write this number of microstates as omega, it is usually denoted by omega and you have a d cube r 1 and uh, I am writing it in just uh, usual coordinate variables and uh, so this is d cube r n each. So, there are all these integrals for these um, configuration coordinates or uh, the real space coordinates and then um, uh, these are of course, um, very easy they go from minus infinity to plus infinity. However, uh, these d q p 1 um, all the way up to d q p n, this is not an independent integration they are subjected to uh, this p being bounded between um, or we can write it as 2 m e uh, less than equal to p 1 square plus p 2 square and so on and p n square and this is bounded between 2 m e plus d e. Okay. So, uh, while we can do these easily because the Hamiltonian does not depend upon the configurational coordinates or the real space coordinate, they only depend upon the momentum coordinate. So, the momentum sum is not that easy or rather it is uh, not trivial whereas, the real space variable is very easy because each one of them gives you a v and we actually get a v to the power n here but we need to understand that uh, how do we uh, compute this and in a sort of uh, you know kind of 3 n dimensional space. Okay. So, this is we have to know how to calculate the volume of a hypersphere. Okay. And how do we do that? Uh, so, uh, let us just forget about the p now, let us do it with a variable which is more uh, convenient for us. So, the volume of, of a hypersphere, the word hyper means that we are now uh, not in 3 dimension, uh, but we are in n dimension. So, volume of a hypersphere of radius r in a, a space dimension n this is given by uh, v uh, n r this is equal to uh, this d x 1 uh, d x 2 all the way up to d x n and a 0 uh, less than x 1 square plus x 2 square plus all that x n square should be less than r square. So, we are uh, just trying to find the volume of a hypersphere of radius r and um, this is um, not too difficult again, uh, but uh, we can do it in 3 dimension without a problem. But, uh, we are trying to show it uh, how to calculate it for a hypersphere. 
So, we know that uh, V n of r is nothing but a n r to the power n okay. and uh, what is uh, a n in 3 d. So, a n is equal to 4 third pi um, and um, so this uh, a 3 rather let us write it as a 3 equal to 4 third pi and we know that uh, v is equal to 4 third pi r cube for n equal to 3. So, we know this, this is known. Now, we can calculate a d v n which is equal to n a uh, n r to the power n minus 1 d r and this is equal to say for example, uh, say s n r d r. Why we want this? Uh, if you remember that if you want a volume between a radius r and r plus dr, uh, uh, this is the volume that is between. So, this is a three dimensional figure and not a two dimensional like what it gives you a feeling. So, this is 4 pi um, r square dr. Okay. And that is exactly what we are trying to find. So, uh, so, like integrating this over entire volume would give us 4 third pi r q. Okay. So, uh, these uh, gamma which we have uh, defined earlier, so gamma n v e if you remember that. So, this is uh, r and r I mean d r uh, this is equal to some uh, s n r uh, d r uh, and this is equal to C n uh, r to the power n minus 1 d r. Evidently, if you uh, have equation 1, equation equation 3, so comparing between 2 and 3, so your C n is nothing but um, n a n and so on. Okay. So, this is your C n and uh, so we have to calculate this coefficient C n or A n um, basically the A n, but then we just multiplied by um, uh, n small n to get the C n. So, we will do that. Uh, so, uh, let us uh, look at this integral uh, which uh, we would use it many times. So, let me write this integral here. Uh, this is called as a Gaussian integral and this Gaussian integral is minus infinity to plus infinity uh, e to the power minus a x square d x. This is called as a Gaussian integral and you should simply uh, learn it by heart. This is equal to root over uh, pi over a. Okay? If you do it from a 0 to infinity, then you have to have a factor of half there. So, uh, this is uh, is root over pi by a and if you have n such integrals, so uh, this means that minus infinity to plus infinity, you have an exponential uh, minus a x 1 square minus a x 2 square minus a x n square all the way d x 1 d x 2 all the way d x n, uh, which means that there are uh, n independent integrals. It can just simply split as e to the power minus a x 1 square d x 1 from minus infinity to plus infinity and the next one minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power minus a x 2 square d x 2 and so on. Okay? So, each one of them will give a root pi by a and this will give me for n of them it gives a pi over a whole to the power n by 2. This is an important uh, result that we should remember because this Gaussian integral will uh, come uh, on various occasions. So, um, now in this particular case we have r square equal to x 1 square plus x 2 square and so on x n square. Okay. So, this integral that we have written that e to the power minus uh, a x square 
d x or we can uh, simply repeat it x 1 square plus x 2 square x n square and d x 1 uh, all the way up to d x n this is equal to 0 to infinity. Now, uh, we uh, change the limit this of course, is from minus infinity to plus infinity and this 0 to infinity and it is e to the power minus a r square uh, n um, a n r to the power n minus 1 dr. So, several times it is done um, because uh, an integral which is from minus infinity to plus infinity if you do something like a sphere it goes from 0 to infinity uh, and uh, we sort of um, write it as 4 pi r square dr in 3D this is exactly uh, written in n dimension. And uh, this is equal to n a n 2 a to the power n by 2 and uh, x to the power n by 2 minus 1 e to the power minus x and this becomes a, a gamma function integral from 0 to infinity and the result is n a n uh, 2 a to the power n by 2 gamma of n by 2. Okay. So, uh, this is the result for this integral. So, actually if you now we have also found this to be pi by a whole to the power n by 2. So, we simply uh, equate them pi a to the power n by 2 equal to n a n 2 a to the power n by 2 gamma n by 2 and now we can solve for a n. So, solve for a n and hence c n. So, a uh, c n becomes equal to 2 pi n by 2 gamma of n by 2. So, what is it for n equal to 3? So, n equal to 3 you have c 3 equal to 4 pi to the power 3 by 2 divided by pi to the power half and this gives you a 4 pi. This is what we know um, as we have said earlier. Okay. So, uh, this uh, now for n equal to 3 n for n equal to 3 n because there are 3 n uh, degrees of freedom uh, this quantity or let us call it a gamma which is equal to. Um, so, for 3 n this is like 2 pi whole to the power 3 n by 2 uh, divided by gamma 3 n by 2 r to the power um, 3 n minus 1 uh, and then dr and, and of course, we will have a v to the power n coming up from the uh, real space and the, or the configuration space. So, this is the volume of a hypersphere, volume of a hypersphere. in 3 n dimensions. Okay. But usually things are not that complicated we can simply do it in 3 D if we want. Um, so, this omega would be simply you know d cube r i and d cube p i. So, that is in 3 D um, and then uh, so, this is like a root over 2 m e. Uh, less than uh, p i and less than root over 2 m e plus d e. And uh, this will of course, give a volume here and this will give us a, a 4 uh, third pi uh, p cube. Now, you use uh, p this relation. So, this will give us a uh, that is a relation between p and e. So, if you want omega as a function of e this is equal to v and 4 third pi 
uh, and 2 m uh, 3 by 2 and e to the power 3 by 2. Okay. So, this is the uh, total number of microstates in 3 D. All right. I mean, we just know that um, how many uh, states are there in a sort of uh, you know three-dimensional. So it, it's like again this volume and this. There is another thing. So this has a radius e. This has a radius e plus de, and we simply count the number of microstates that are there in this region. Okay, and that is given by this, and e it goes as uh, you know e to the power three by two. That's all. Okay. So, um, now this is very importantly, this is related to the entropy of the system. So, entropy is given by S is equal to um, K log omega and this is equal to K log of um, you know we can take this, this is a constant 4 pi v by 3 2 m to the power uh, 3 by 2. So, let me use a different bracket here and just to uh, take out this uh, factor. So, it is log of e and there is a prefactor of uh, 3 by 2 because you have taken a log the exponent comes down and we have a 3 by 2 um, k um, and a log of this quantity uh, which is 4 pi v by 3 2 m to the power 3 by 2 and a log of e. Okay. So, this is how the uh, entropy is uh, it, it goes the entropy goes uh, like this it is a log of e. So, um, a log you know uh, you have uh, 100 say for example, we talk about log 10. Uh, so, log 100 is log 10 square and log 10 is equal to 1. So, we just talk about log not the natural log, but uh, what I am trying to say is that it uh, drastically cuts down the number. So, 10 to the power 6 which is like a billion is become 6 when you take a log. Okay. So, all right. So, uh, let us do another uh, problem and let us do uh, this harmonic oscillator. You will see uh, throughout even if you uh, read books that these are some of the problems that are done. In fact, three uh, prototype problems if you can pick up do it well you pretty much know uh, more I mean most of statistical physics. Of course, there are very large number of problems that exist. But as an example uh, in textbooks, mostly these are uh, you know uh, given. One is a classical ideal gas, second is an oscillator, and third is uh, uh, a collection of spins or magnetic moments in an external magnetic field. And we'll do all three. So let's take a uh, again an example. Let me not write, uh, just write harmonic oscillator. And uh, what is the Hamiltonian? The Hamiltonian is p square over 2 m plus half m omega square x square. And we have shown that uh, for a constant energy, uh, if energy e equal to constant, uh, the phase space trajectory is that of an ellipse. Uh, with some semi major axis and semi minor axis. Now, we want to calculate this and in, this is in 1 d okay, in 1 d and we want to calculate the number of microstates and that is nothing but uh, d x d p. Uh, this is a little more complicated integral that we have seen because now there are uh, two variables. So, each one of those uh, x and p 
they are there in the Hamiltonian. So, uh, but there is a way to do that. This is basically nothing but uh, the area of an ellipse which is given by pi a b. So, what we say is that we, we draw an ellipse okay, and in the phase space and uh, where this a is given by uh, root over 2 m e this has been done earlier. Um, and the b is equal to root over 2 e by m omega square all are constants for this given. Uh, so, there is a constant energy surface. All right. So, if this is true then um, a d uh, x d p um, uh, this is equal to divided by. Um, so, this omega becomes equal to 2 pi e by omega and um, if I uh, divide both sides by uh, you know h omega. So, if I do it by uh, h here, so d x d p by h this is equal to 2 pi e by h omega, I will come to this h in just a while, uh, this h is nothing but the Planck's constant. So, this is e over h cross omega and uh, this uh, is a quantity by uh, bohr sommerfeld quantization condition. Uh, what it says is that uh, between two canonical variables the closed line integral is equal to n h where n is just a quantum number and h is Planck's constant and one can derive it from the w k b approximation. Okay. So, uh, this uh, then uh, your d x d p divided by h which is related to this um, you know the number of microstates this is equal to e over h cross omega which is equal to n. So, uh, you know one is that it tells you that uh, this is just a, so the phase space density is just the number of oscillators. Uh, here uh, if you do an exact calculation it uh, gives you e equal to n plus half h cross omega. So, the simple minded bohr sommerfeld quantization condition really misses this factor of half which is called as a 0 point energy, but the nevertheless it gives you uh, that the uh, this phase space uh, uh, integration, integration over the phase space uh, and uh, uh, this is given by uh, some number n which gives you the number of oscillators. And uh, for a more uh, you know sort of um, general problem which is given by h equal to p square over 2 m and without specifying v of x. So, this is more uh, general problem. Okay, so, v of x can be anything. So, the number of microstates it is equal to uh, the area of the phase space which is given by omega equal to you know again d x d p such that your h is always uh, you know uh, gives you pertaining to this condition. And uh, we have p given by root over 2 m e minus v of x. So, that is the p that we get and then we can calculate this uh, number of microstates if we uh, really uh, look at this Green's theorem, this maybe you should look at it uh, in vector calculus. So, Green's theorem states that um, you have a closed line integral of is L d x plus m d y where L is a function of x and y or here p and q this is equal to over a surface this over a contour it is a surface integral of del L del y minus a del m del x and um, d x d y. Okay. So, if you put um, L equal to p 
and m equal to 0, uh, then uh, this uh, integral uh, that is uh, the surface integral is del L del y minus del m del x is equal to dx dy equal to. So, this is like a del p del p dx dy d, uh, and now this dx dp and this is equal to this dx dp again uh, I mean subject to this condition and uh, this is nothing but a p dx by the left hand side uh, of the Green's theorem h is uh, less than e and uh, once again the bohr sommer field quantization condition let me abbreviate it as bsqc this is equal to a p dx is equal to nh and uh, then the n comes out as uh, again this same number of microstates which is dx dp over h and h is uh, bounded between this value. So, uh, let me uh, just take one moment and uh, find out that where is this h coming from, h coming in classical physics. And uh, really there is no h. Uh, in classical physics, but what we do is that uh, because in order to keep a sort of parallel with quantum mechanics, which is impeded by um, a very accurate measurement of both p and x such that this delta x delta p x just talking about in one dimension, but it can be uh, generalized to three dimension. So, this is equal to uh, of the order of h or h cross it does not matter h uh, say h cross or or simply h uh, where h cross is h over 2 pi ok. So, now we have in uh, classical we have this points in the phase space. So, these are well defined point in the p x space, but however, if you want to carry it over to uh, quantum mechanics then what we do is that we make these uh, discretize both the x and p and each one of those represent one microstate. So, uh, both uh, the p and x are given a little bit of fuzziness such that uh, this is this has an area which is like or rather um, you know uh, I mean this this shaded region is delta x I mean this is x and this is p x. So, this delta x delta p x is equal to h or h cross whatever ok. So, this is of the order of h cross let me write it as h because we have been talking about h. So, this is uh, it is just that it is of the order of h ok it could be h h by 2 or something or it does not matter. So, now in classical physics what we do is that uh, from a point we give it a little bit of fuzziness. So, a point here is uh, this point in the phase space is now defined in a small region of uh, which has an area of h and in three dimension it has a volume of h cube. And that is how uh, in order to carry over the some of the calculations from classical physics to quantum physics, uh, we consider each point by a small uh, say for example, a cube of uh, volume h cube each of those uh, cubes now denote a microstate. So, that is how we uh, uh, sort of divide these things by uh, we will see that we will divide various quantities for example, a partition function that we are going to define um, in the following discussion and we divide it by this uh, this h cube um, in order to have a one to one correspondence with uh, quantum physics. We will stop here for today. Mm -hmm.